So many people like to dance and do other activities like playing soccer, and yet many are unable to in part due to ongoing pain. Now pain has many causes. It can either be from external injuries, such as pain to the body, or from internal changes, as in the case of autoimmune disorders or diabetes. Um, and we would want to change, but while many treatments exist, painkillers can often be ineffective in certain patients or have unacceptable side effects, as we've seen in the opioid epidemic. And so we would like to change this in part by better understanding both the neural and molecular mechanisms of pain. Now, pain is critical for survival. You need it to escape from dangerous stimuli or to attend to an injured body part. And yet we don't always perceive pain in the same way. And so here you're seeing the last minute of the last match of the season, and the team must score in order to win. And right as he's about to go into the goal, you see that a defender goes in and stamps on his foot. And while many of us will think that soccer players kind of you know, fall over a lot and exaggerate their injuries, this is painful, and yet he ignores it goes on to score, and they win the league in dramatic fashion. And so what we want to do is understand where along this pain pathway these stimuli are being blocked, and can this tell us about what's going on in chronic pain where we think the incorrect stimuli are being sent to the brain. So how are we going to do this? So we need to be able to monitor neural activity in awake animals, in part to relate neural activity to perception. And while me and others have done this in the brain, we want to look at the spinal cord to better understand how is that signal being processed before it even gets to the brain. And so to do that, a colleague and I developed both experimental and surgical approaches that have allowed us to peer into the spinal cord over time. And we do that by expressing a protein in neurons that fluoresces or blinks like a flashlight. And then we can go in and pirouette it with a microscope so what this allowed me to do is go in and peer into the spinal cord over time and look at the changes that are going on. And so what I've been able to do is use both computational approaches I've developed um, and new techniques to see the same neurons are being activated day in, day out as the animal responds to different types of painful stimuli. And so using this approach, we're now seeing in pain models, do you get an increase in the neural activity as chronic pain develops? And using new painkillers being developed here at UCSF, do you also now see that activity going back to normal, suggesting that these painkillers will be helpful in alleviating pain in patients so they can go back to doing the activities that they really love, like soccer or dancing? Thank you.